hands together as we bring up on stage the man. See, if you see this bro, you're going to love him. Please put your hands together as we bring up on stage Leon Johnson. Morning, everyone. How is everyone? Everyone's good? All right, awesome. So thank you for coming this morning. Uh, I'm going to introduce some panelists for today's panel, which is on self-custody, innovations in wallet technology. So first of all, if I could get Max to come up on stage, please. Can I get a round of applause? Abby, please come up on stage. Thank you. All right, awesome, guys. So let's get straight into this. So first of all, if we could just start with introductions. So my name is Leon. I work for Fedi. I'm the head of operations there. And some of you probably saw me yesterday. Um, but let's start with Max. If you could give us an introduction, who you are uh, and what you do. Sure. Are we passing? Oh, these are on now. Great. Hi, uh, I'm Max. Uh, I'm leading development of BitKey. BitKey is a self-custody self wallet uh, that we're building at Block. Uh, and it includes a mobile app, uh, a secure hardware device, and a set of recovery tools. Awesome. Thank you for that, Max. Good morning, Africa. This has been amazing, fantastic time, fantastic three days of connection. Uh, my name is Abhi. Uh, I work on two projects uh, together. One is a self-custody wallet-based company called BitHive. We have two products called Tribe Wallet and Keeper. Tribe is for entry-level users, whereas Keeper is for slightly uh, advanced users. Uh, so that's one project. The other project is Bitcoin for India, where we uh, spend considerable amount of time, attention, energy to connect Indian Bitcoiners, and now connecting Indian Bitcoiners to the globe. And this, this, it, it, it all starts here, right? So excited for this session. Excited to share things with you guys. Thank you. Glad that you guys are here. Thanks for that. All right, so let's just start with the basics. Can you clarify for us, what do we mean by self-custody? Self what, what does that mean? Can you give us a brief sure. explanation? I think maybe we'll pass this back and forth so you all can hear us better. Uh, when we talk about self-custody, what we're talking about doing is putting the keys that represent Bitcoin ownership in people's hands, not in the hands of a custodial service. So what that actually means and what we see today is the vast majority of Bitcoin owners they don't actually hold the keys that represent and, and unlock and allow them to move their Bitcoin. Instead, a third party does. Very often, it's the exchange probably where they bought their Bitcoin in the first place, but it also could be additional custodial platforms that maybe people don't even realize actually hold the, hold the keys to their Bitcoin. And this opens people up to a handful of risks. One of those is mismanagement of funds, so like what we've seen with FTX. If you think back 12, 18, I guess 18 months ago now, uh, People were recommending FTX as one of the best places to, to buy Bitcoin and hold Bitcoin, and that turned out to be really risky. They were gambling with the funds and basically just directly defrauding people. And so uh, mismanagement is, is one of the biggest reasons. Uh, in addition, hacking, so big uh, centralized custodians that hold the keys to everyone's Bitcoin uh, become targets for hackers. Uh, and the third is something we call the paper cuts of custodial services, and that's that whoever holds the keys, makes decisions about how much money can move, when it can move, and to whom. And when we put the keys in people's hands, they make the rules, not, not the custodial platforms. Brilliant, thank you. No, this is okay. Thank you. So I'll come at it from a different, different place, a different angle, uh, and like really try to simplify it for, for our friends who have been asking here, okay, where do I get Bitcoin? Uh, how do I get started, right? First of all, if, if you're trying to get Bitcoin on a website and an app, and that website and that, uh, and that app has taken all sorts of information from you, uh, right, 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 right from your date of birth to your natal and astrological charts, probably not the best place to get your Bitcoin, number one. Number two, if you do get your Bitcoin from that place, make sure that you have a wallet in your phone or on your computer where you are shifting that Bitcoin to. And those wallets, that is the term that the gentlemen have been using, non-custodial wallet. Look for non-custodial, 
Bitcoin only wallets, don't let it be a crypto wallet. There is a difference and there are many, many really good Bitcoin only wallets. Look for non-custodial Bitcoin only wallets. Shift your Bitcoin over there, number one. Number two, the best place is peer to peer. Try, try to meet Bitcoiners and try to attend meetups. That would help you get Bitcoin uh, relatively easily and self-custody it in a much more secure manner because those Bitcoiners would tell you about backup, etc., etc., which we can which we can lead up into into uh, in, in in this discussion. Yeah. Thank you for that. All right, so let's go a bit deeper into this. So, what are some of the challenges around self-custody? Because surely, if it was easy and straightforward, everyone would be doing it. Uh, there's a reason why custodial wallets uh, have been very popular. So can you just kind of give us a walk through some of the challenges around self-custody? Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll jump in first on this one. So uh, the primary challenge around self-custody is ease of use. The reason people gravitate towards custodial platforms is because they can manage the user experience, they can make simplifications to the user experience that become much more difficult in a self-custody setting. And as a result, uh, custodial solutions tend to be a lot easier to use than what's out there today for self-custody. There's some really good self-custody solutions out there today that are really hard to use. Oftentimes, might take a really long time for setup, uh, might require technical knowledge as people learn how to use a completely new device. Uh, and in addition, very often those things lead to mistakes that leave people in an unsafe setting like having their seed phrase written down in an unsafe way or stored in a cloud account because they were told to back it up and don't actually have a really good solution to do that. And so that's what we've been primarily focused on with building BitKey is we want to make self-custody a realistic option for a broad audience. And as a result, we think that that comes with a very, very high bar for user experience, finding ways to simplify the experience that our customers go through, and in particular by providing resilience against accidental loss. So people losing access to their keys, getting locked out, often by accident is one of the main things that we need to uh, build a much better solution for if we want a lot more people to come to self-custody. Okay, awesome. And just help us understand a bit about BitKey. How does that uh, help people that are kind of new to the system? Can you kind of describe how it works and some of the benefits? Sure, absolutely. So BitKey uh, is a self-custody wallet with a mobile app, a secure hardware device, and a set of recovery tools. And the, the way it works uh, is we're trying to make it easy for you if you lose your phone, if you lose your hardware device, um, or even if you lose both, for people to get access to their keys again. Awesome. And the way we have approached that is with using a technology on Bitcoin called multi-signature. So at a proto protocol level, Bitcoin enables you to specify that instead of having just one key that con controls access to the Bitcoin, you can specify that there is more than one and that more than one is required to move money. And so we built what we call a two of three, three total keys, two required to move money, uh, that uh, we have one key in the mobile app, one key in the hardware, and one, one key that's held by block on behalf of customers so, they can, so that we can help uh, them recover access to their funds when they lose either or both of their awesome. devices. Love that. Could you specify the question once again, please? Yeah, sure, definitely. Um, so the question is, what are some of the historical challenges around self-custody? So f first thing in my opinion is our fiat mindset, right? Okay. That someone else custody is for us, right? Our fiat is custodied by someone else and we don't have to worry about it. We've got someone else that we could blame, question, catch hold of, etc. So the number one shift that needs to happen is that there is no customer care service that you call and say, hey, my Bitcoins are stuck, please give them back to me. Can you help, you know, can you get them back to me? There, there isn't, if, you are, if, if it is a self-custody wallet, first of all. So the responsibility is with you. Now, us, we as Bitcoiners, we need to drive that narrative home with everyone that we are welcoming into the fold that the ultimate responsibility is with us. Number one, while doing that, the first thing is backup. Backup, backup, backup. Backup your wallet, write down your seed words. Do n for heaven's sake, do not store it on an electronic system, otherwise we get a viral video where someone lost 25 BTC. And then that was a rant that we enjoyed that entire day, didn't we? So backup your wallet. And so backup being step one, don't stop at that. 
please recreate that wallet. Once you have put put hundred sats, put thousand sats, put ten thousand sats, uh, as once your wallet is backed up, delete that wallet after you have uh, written down the seed words and recreate that. You need to have confidence in your setup of, of your own setup because there isn't a customer care uh, service number that you could call up and say, hey, where are my Bitcoin? Okay, thank you for that. So let's talk a bit about customer service because whenever someone is managing money, we'd expect them to have you know, a place where they could uh, question what's happening, if they need further education, if they need some support. Um, so is there a difference in the level of customer support that's provided between um, custodial wallets and non-custodial? I'll, okay, I'll start on that. So for sure, uh, these, these are, there are always trade-offs, right? We, we get that. It, as long as you as a Bitcoin holder have spent time understanding what the trade-offs are and then going in, it, it shouldn't matter how, whether whether you're going, taking help of custodial services or non-custodial services. And yes, there are caveats. There are a lot many things for you to consider. Now, ha having said, both custodial as well as non-custodial wallets. So this is this is more of, of a feedback for the developer community that's over here who would be considering coming up with wallets or integrating wallets that it is not just about your you developing a beautiful wallet and you developing a, a self-custody self or a custodial wallet. It, it is also how about you support your users. And uh, it is very important to understand that however simple we might try to make it, there would, there would be questions. And there have to be avenues like Twitter or Telegram or WhatsApp or email or phone calls that people could reach out to wallet creators and say, hey, could you help me with this? It might very well might happen that the user may have forgotten their seed words or misplaced their seed words. But apart from that, there may be many, many chances, and we've experienced this with Keeper and Tribe, that uh, a, a bug fix uh, enables people to access their Bitcoin. Now, when people are reaching out to you, they are harried, they are worried that where are my Bitcoin, I can't see my Bitcoin, it, and it would be there. It's just a matter of a bug fix. But one, us as developers, the, the onus is on us that we specify the user and we tell them, hey, uh, what is the issue? We are there with you, we'll support you, we'll guide you through, please do not worry. And then take it, take it up uh, on urgent basis that we fix things. As uh, if we can fix issues within this, the next print itself, that would be fantastic. So yeah, that is, that is my answer to that. Yeah. Brilliant. And Max? Did the, I think one thing that I'd add here is that education is going to be a really important component. In particular, one of the things that we see is that a lot of the risks of custodial platforms that I talked about earlier, a lot of people don't know about. And as we've done customer research across a wide range of countries, because one of the really special things about BitKey is we'll be able to launch to more than 90 countries when we go live. Uh, as we've done customer research across a number of those, those areas, we find that a lot of people don't realize they might have a wallet and not understand that it's custodial. And they might not realize that all of a sudden they might open that app and that, that business is closed and their money has gone. And I think finding a way to help educate folks really, really well up front is going to be important. And in addition, the same is true for the solutions that we're building. We can't just say, hey, look, there's all these problems over here with a custodial platform, and then not talk about how what we're building works. And so part of our approach is to develop openly. Uh, we're publishing information about, for example, some of the recovery services that I talked about. What happens when you lose your phone? What happens when you lose your hardware device? What happens when you lose both? Uh, we published a paper actually earlier this week on our development blog highlighting how, how that works under the hood. And we're planning to publish all of the code for how the hardware device works, all of the code for the mobile app uh, prior to going live. And a big part of what's behind this is at every level of the stack, we really want to help people understand how does something like a Bitkey work? How does self-custody work? What are the other risks and trade-offs that people might be taking on? Thank you for that. Awesome. So the next question I have is really about something that happened recently. So a very popular wallet called Wallet of Satoshi uh, recently stopped accepting US customers. 
So now there's kind of been a bit of a scramble. Many customers are looking elsewhere. So my question to you guys is, are non-custodial Lightning wallets ready for prime time? I think we're both smiling. <laughs> we know the answer is not yet. Uh, and what's behind that? So, so let's unpack the question a little bit. So first of all, the, the Lightning Network, uh, in general, we're really excited about. And I think many folks in this room have probably used the Lightning Network, and if you haven't, at the booths back here, you, you, can, you can experiment with it. And what Lightning is, is it's a network built on top of Bitcoin. So it's not the layer one of Bitcoin, it's an L2, that it's a layer two uh, solution that really what it's aimed at doing is with the same security as the underlying layer of Bitcoin, uh, provide very fast and very inexpensive payments. I think lots of folks here have probably seen when you try to move money with Bitcoin, if you're on layer one, sometimes that can be quite expensive. And in addition, it's not fast. You might have to wait 10, 30 minutes to have a transaction confirmed. And you can imagine if you showed up at this conference and you went in the line to go pay a registration because you hadn't paid before, and then you got to stand there for 15 minutes to wait for the transaction to confirm, like it just doesn't work for that use case. And so uh, we, I think directionally building and, and enabling non-custodial lightning is really important if we want to be able to serve more use cases. Now, at a technical level, it's incredibly difficult. Uh, going from having back-end servers that control all of the keys involved in, in delivering lightning payments to allowing keys to live on people's phones and in people's hands with a, a solution like BitKey, for example, uh, is really, really difficult. It causes all kinds of technical problems under the hood. Uh, and uh, there are some really great projects out there working on this. Uh, one of them is actually sponsored by Block. It's the Lightning Development Kit yep. uh, to try to make it easier for wallet developers to, uh, to, to pick this up uh, and to integrate Lightning. Um, but the reality is there are some really hard technical challenges. And it's not just one entity like Block that needs to solve them. You actually need interoperability to solve some of these problems throughout the community. And there's some really interesting efforts there. And if you would like to read more about these sorts of things, this is the type of stuff that we publish on our blog, which is at bitkey.build. Uh, in case that's not obvious, .build is a domain name, so you can go to bitkey.build and follow along. Thank you, Max. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll take it uh, to, a, to a different place. Uh, Put, put as many sats in, in your Lightning wallet. Currently, uh, Lightning needs to evolve, we all know that. But we also need to use Bitcoin, we need to facilitate Bitcoin adoption, right? Put as, as much Bitcoin in your Lightning wallets that you're okay to lose, uh, maybe on a, maybe, maybe on a day, daily basis, on, on maybe two days basis. That is, that is, that is your transactions, your day-to-day your -day transactions. That would be a suggestion. I, I won't put a number to it, obviously. Uh, sure. Everyone has got a different risk appetite, right? But because Lightning wallets, uh, the whole custodial versus non-custodial issue is not settled yet, should not be a hindrance for continued adoption. Because ultimately, we want Bitcoin to scale, uh, the adoption to scale, more and more people using Bitcoin. And Lightning is the best that we have currently, right? So as long as there are sats that you can send out, 1,000 sats, 1,500 sats, and get things moving in the real world, I don't see that as a problem. While us devs, our teams, uh, figure out the harder questions. So, yeah. Brilliant, awesome. So we're just about to come to an end. I, I think we should take one question from the audience. I, I've not seen questions <laughs> coming in. Maybe one question. I, I know Paul would kill me for that. Paul. This Can is we me. take one more? Let's. All right, let's, one let's question. Have one. Let's do it. Hello, my name is Dino. I'm from uh, America and I live in Maryland. My question is you mentioned uh, backing up your wallet. Can you be more specific in terms of how a user should back up their wallets? Sir, uh, every wallet would give you very, very specific instructions how to go about doing it, right? Uh, the opinion is out on what is the best way for multiple reasons. The one that is accepted within the ecosystem is something called using seed words. Okay? So every self-custody wallet would guide you and it would prompt you as a user saying, have you backed up your wallet? You are about to make a transaction, have you backed up your wallet? Right? And it would direct you to a specific section within the wallet where it would show you your seed words. And then it would test you. It would ask you, hey, have you written these words down? Okay, what was the seventh word? What was the eighth word? Etc. Right? 
and then it would give you a check mark saying yes your wallet is backed up right so that is on the side of the wallet itself the technology itself the app itself on the human side of things you need to make sure that you are keeping those seed words safe one of the most important things of keeping those seed words safe is not putting it in a digital platform it's just 12 words you write it down and you keep that paper safe right uh, so so that is that is how you go about doing it all all wallets provide that I'd love to add just a little bit from the BitKey perspective. So your, your question is an awesome one. It's essentially one of the core problems that we're trying to solve is that today when you set up a self-custody wallet, you inherit 12 or 24 words that it's now suddenly your problem to answer exactly the question you asked. And what we're building with BitKey is a system that has a whole bunch of answers right up front for you to try to make it uh, very difficult for you to accidentally lose track of that backup. So a couple of the components of that, one is that we put an encrypted backup in the uh, Google or Apple storage associated with the account you're logged into on your phone. Uh, the second is that Block holds the key on behalf of customers so that if you lose one, we have some parameters around when we can help you recover. Uh, things like a long security delay where we reach out to the email that you signed up with to make sure that it's you. Uh, and then the, the third feature is something we call social recovery. And social recovery is an option where you can enroll what we call trusted contacts. And those can be friends or family members that store a part of that backup for you. Not the whole thing, they can't move money without you, uh, but also they store a part that can help you move money when you do lose your, your wallet. So ultimately what we're trying to do is make this way easier than suddenly burdening you with something that you can never lose and you can never let anybody else see. And so. Uh, we've taken an approach that doesn't involve seed phrases. Brilliant. Thank you for that. We only have time for one question, so thank you to the panelists. Uh, just before we go, can you just tell us when is the BitKey device going to be available for people here on the continent to be able to buy? Yeah, so uh, we're in, in, in a beta right now, so we have a limited number of, of folks right now giving us feedback, so finding bugs, Where do we telling sign us up? what they love, love and, and uh -huh. don't. Uh, and uh, actually at, at bitkey.build. So um, we, I will say we're, we're pretty oversubscribed, so uh, we'd love to have as many po people as possible in the beta, but uh, we are uh, working quickly towards, towards launch. Uh, and so the best way to stay tuned on that is to go to bitkey.build and follow us along. Awesome. Thank you guys for your time. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Enjoy.